because... because lol. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I'm your humble narrator, and welcome to part number two of my three-part competitive Pokemon building guide. This part will be focusing on synergy and teamwork, but before we get into that, I should probably talk about the roles that each Pokemon can play. For defensive roles, you basically have support, which uh, are screeners such as Bronzong, who can set up light screen and reflect to half the damage that is coming your way. There are clerics that can heal status, as well as uh, passing wishes, which are usually Chansey or uh, Audino. And then you've got uh, rapid spin support in the form of things like Blast, Blastoise or Claydol. On the uh, more offensive side of the defensive side, <laughs> you have tanks, which are generally uh, physical or special walls with a setup move. So you'll take a Pokemon like a Snorlax or a Slowbro, and uh, Snorlax learns a move called Curse, which lowers its speed and raises its attack and defense. So you basically bulk up um, Snorlax's special defense as high as it can go, and then once you send it out on a special Pokemon, you can start boosting up with Curse. And after two or three Curses, not even a fighting type is going to be able to take Snorlax down. Really a brutal thing to deal with. The same with Slowbro. If you give him a uh, full HP and defense investment, he can use Calm Mind to boost his special defense and special attack. And uh, also really become a, a threat. I like to use tanks, although... I don't use them as much as I should probably. They're they're very very powerful in the uh, the sixth generation games. Kind of in the middle of defense and offense. There's like lead Pokemon or scouts. Uh, you've got entry hazard leads, which can be basically anything from a Tyranitar to a Hippowdon to a, a Blissey or a Smeargle that sets up stealth rocks um, and spikes and toxic spikes, spore, whatever. You've got a suicide lead, which is basically as elf, um, which you slap a focus sash on it. You'll send it out. It'll set up stealth rocks, uh, maybe do a move, and then end up exploding at the very end. Anti lead lead is a uh, Pokemon like Machamp is a pretty good threat. Um, basically, you see something like Ambipom, it's not going to want to stay in against a Machamp. And then finally you've got the uh, Baton Pass leads, which are basically just meant to boost their stats and pass it to another player. Ninjask is really good at that because he has the speed boost ability. And um, basically a lead is pretty important on your team. Um, I don't always have one, but uh, it, it usually serves a good purpose, especially if you slap a Choice Scarf on it and it's not um, really taking that much damage. It can really save you once the battle gets uh, down to the skinny. <laughs> and on the offensive side, we've got sweepers, which can be physical or special, or you can also have a mix sweeper, which uh, throws people off. And then you also have revenge killers, which are kind of like scouts. They are super, super fast Pokemon that are just meant to uh, get the revenge KO. Somebody knocks you out, you're sending your fast Pokemon, and... Uh, basically make it a one-for-one one knockout if you don't take too much damage. And uh, aside from sweepers, you have wall breakers, which are kind of similar to tanks, except their offense is way more off the charts. Things like Chandelure uh, has like 135 special attack or something like that. So just boosting that one time with a Calm Mind will put you well over 400 special attack, and uh, you will devastate some shit. Maybe not a Blissey or some massive special wall like that, but it'll it'll put a dent in a lot of stuff. So those are basically all of the roles. I feel I should talk about some of the items that could be used for each role. Um, there are some items that can go either way. Things like Air Balloon, which basically gives you a ground resistance, because ground is absolutely everywhere in the metagame. Everybody gets earthquaked. And um, so yeah, that'll give you like Levitate for a little bit until you get hit. And then you've also got uh, options like the EVO Light, which will boost the defense and special defense of a non-evolved Pokemon by 50%. So you can make some really, really buff Pokemon. Chance it used to be a one-stage evolution, but now that 
we've got uh, Blissey on the scene. Chansey has moved up into the OU tier, while Chance or er, Blissey, its evolved form, has fallen down to underuse UU, which is pretty hilarious to me, uh, and all because of the Eviolite item. For walls, you generally want to give them uh, leftovers, or if they're part poison type, you can give them black sludge, which will ser serve the same purpose. Um, there's bright powder, which is generally frowned upon uh, because it plays with like the accuracy and whatnot. And people in competitive play generally want uh, there to be no such thing as like critical hits or luck-based anything, but uh, that's that's not really how Pokemon works. Luck has a hell of a lot to do with it. So I'm not I'm not scared to use bright powder every once in a while. Uh, then you've got the light clay, which is for the screeners I was talking about earlier. It'll take the the amount of turns of your screens from four to eight. So absolutely massive. You can definitely get something in there and set up with eight turns of screen. Um, there's red card, which basically sends your opponent out, and then there's eject button, which pushes you out uh, whenever you are attacked. Which is pretty interesting. You can uh, get some pretty strange tactics going on with that. Things like lagging tail. I mean, I'm not so much into the gimmicky tactics, um, but I have seen it used devastatingly against me, so it's not to be uh, completely written off. And then um, finally, you have like for defensive Pokemon's one of the items that I would give them would be uh, Weather Rock if you're looking to run a Weather Team. You've got the uh, Smooth Rock, if you like Sandstorm, the Damp Rock for Rain, the Heat Rock for Sun, and the Icy Rock for Snow. And again, that'll take the turns from 4 to 8, so you can definitely get something set up in that Sun or Rain. Um, for Offensive Pokemon, I will generally give them uh, a Life Orb or a Choice Item. Life Orb just makes them hit really hard. It will sacrifice their survivability a whole lot as you are losing 10% HP every turn or every time you make an attack. Um, and then choice items will give you basically the same boost uh, and you don't lose any health except you are now locked into the move that you chose. So generally I'll go with uh, a choice item. There's also things like uh, Focus Sash, which I talked about as Elf using. It's also good on Smeargle or basically any any frail Pokemon. Slap it on an Alakazam and surprise some people. Uh, then you've got Gems, which are pretty useful. They boost the power of an attack one time, but it's also consumed on the use. So things like Unburden can be activated with Gems, which is extremely useful because you're not only hitting your opponent extremely hard, you're also moving faster than them after that happens. So, finally there are berries, um, which are generally just used to cover your ass. <laughs> Anything that your team doesn't cover, um, we'll look at the synergy of the team that I make right now, and perhaps I can add some, some berries to it. So the first Pokemon that I've added obviously from the last video, is our boss toys. Hell yes, he's got Aqua Ring. Just like I said, I've also decided to put Scald because it has that burn chance. And then we've got Haze to remove any stat changes on the opponent if they decide to start boosting. And Rapid Spin to get rid of Stealth Rocks, which is extremely important for keeping Crobat alive. I've given boss toys a uh, physically defensive loadout, just like I said in the last video. And, uh... It's, it's pretty bulky. Pretty bulky indeed. I would not want to try and break that defense with uh, unboosted moves. Next we have uh, <clears throat> Blissey, who I've also given leftovers. Her ability, Natural Cure, allows her to get rid of status ailments whenever she switches out. She is a bit of taunt bait. If uh, she gets taunted, which forces you to do an attacking move, she can only struggle because she has Toxic, Stealth Rock, Wish, and Protect. One of those should probably be Seismic Toss, but um, there's only four move slots, and I just I can't give up what I have currently because it just works for my team. She's a super good cleric and uh, a super good status absorber as well. If I see a burn coming for like Crobat or something like that, you just throw Blissey in there to, to eat the burn up, and it works out pretty well. Uh, really good special wall. 
I have uh, invested her into defense as well. She also has a bold nature, just like Blastoise. Um, but that's basically because her special defense has already skyrocketed. 100, 135, and then that base HP is just off the charts. So, Blissey doesn't need too much help being a wall. She does her job extremely well, and uh, that's why Ignorance has made it onto my team. Oh, yes. So, to cover uh, the electric weaknesses of our Blastoise, we've brought in um, Tesla, the Electrovire, who has the motor drive ability, which will be boost speed by 50% if you're hit by an electric attack. And we have both Crobat and uh, Blastoise to lure in those electric attacks. Once I get the boost, um, Electrovire has a really, really wide range of moves at his disposal. Uh, Cross Chop, Flamethrower, Earthquake, Thunderbolt, Fighting, Fire, Ground, Electric. That is amazing coverage right there. It's going to take out a whole lot of stuff. Um, as you can see, it's a lonely nature. I've decided to uh, get down this Electrovire's defense just a little bit in exchange for uh, not hurting a special attack because we are using the Flamethrower and the Thunderbolt. So... Resisting the ground moves that uh, Tesla would be afraid of, and also using the grass moves as a, an attack boost is our Go Goat, which is actually uh, having. <laughs> I put a choice scarf on it, basically because nobody sees it coming. Uh, Go Goat has a really, really low base speed of 68, so even with the choice scarf, it's not going to beat every single Pokemon. Uh, but it does give it a pretty good su surprise factor, especially if you switch in on a grass move. So you get 50% attack boost, 50% speed boost from the Choice Scarf, and uh, you're able to really punch some holes as long as they don't have something that'll resist uh, your grass, electric, ground, normal move, whatever he's deciding to use. Double Edge, Horn Leech, uh, Earthquake, and Wild Charge. Double Edge and Wild Charge both have recoil damage to them. Uh, so you can kind of try and heal that back up with Horn Leech, but it would be a heck of a lot easier without a choice item. So we've got Batman the Crobat here, <clears throat> basically serving as our revenge killer. His uh, electric weakness is kind of covered by, well, his electric weakness is covered by Gogo and Electrovire. However, he does have that ice weakness, uh, but that's decently covered by Blastoise and Duo Blade. So, I've decided to make this Crobat uh, a banded Crobat. I, I just love these choice items. It is a really hyper-offensive metagame these days, and choice items often give me the edge that I need to win. Um, so yeah, Jolly Nature, his, his speed is already through the roof at almost 400. So yeah, with the choice band equipped, 50% uh, boost, it's like four, almost 420 attack on Crobat. Which is freaking insane when combined with that speed. He is one of the best revenge killers in the UU tier. And um, speaking of the UU tier, that is why we have a duo blade and not a Hone Edge. Hone Edge is a, an OU Pokemon because people like him that much. But even his pre-evolved form is pretty damn useful. So we've decided to give it an Eviolite, which might seem like an interesting choice. Um, but when you look at this Pokemon's defense at 150, you will realize that it becomes quite a physical wall. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about when I say a tank Pokemon. So basically we get him in there on a physical attacker, boost him up with a uh, sword stance, and then we got the priority shadow sneak, which is also same type attack, and uh, we can start wrecking shit with slice and dice the duo blade. So. My team works out relatively well. Um, it looks pretty balanced. I'll throw it in the team builder real quick, and I'll show you guys. So this is a team building chart from teammagma.net/teambuilder. I've uh, go ahead and stuck all my Pokemon in the left of the screen, which I don't think you can see. But um, basically, this is giving me a layout of. Everything that has weaknesses, two times weaknesses, everything that's resisted, everything that's immune, every time, everything that's four times resistant. So we actually have uh, two four times resistant bugs to bugs on our team. 
Uh, we do have a weakness to flying, but we also have two resistances, so that's uh, a little, a little more balance. Uh, then you've got these definitely unbalanced areas, which are red, because we don't have anything. Oh, we have one Pokemon that resists fire, and um, we have two that are weak to it. So it is sort of unbalanced there. However, I think it can be worked around. So. We are going to go ahead and see how this team does against uh, a real-life player. Alright, here we are, me and my squad. What, what, boss choice. And we're going to send out Slice and Dice first. And he's got a Sharpedo on his team. I think it's going to protect. So we Swords Dance up right here. And, uh, oh shit. We are weak to Dark. We don't have a good Dark resistance because they've changed the effectiveness of it against Steel. So, it's gonna be super effective because I'm Ghost-type and Steel doesn't resist anymore. But we live! We lived! Good job. So that Sacred Sword is gonna fucking take the Sharpedo out. Luckily, he has Speed Boost because Rough Skin would've killed me right there. And he sends out Young Lungs, the wheezing. I probably should have gone for Shadow Sneak there, but I thought I would outspeed overestimating the uh, ability of my Duo Blade there. But that's alright. We'll send out uh, Bostoise to see if he's got the Thunderbolt. Or if he's... He does have that Jolteon in the back too, but he might be scared to use it because he saw my Electivire on the team preview. And it's pretty obvious what he's there for. <laughs> so, he burns my Bostoise, which is just fine. I mean, he's he's only a special attacker. He's only got one attack, really, anyways. So here's uh, Tesla, the Electrovire. He got the Weezing Pain Splits against me, but that's not going to do much, I think. Yeah, but my special attack isn't going to hit him too well either, because I did not put that, in, that much investment into it. If I had gone, like, you know, 32 points instead of only 4 then perhaps I could uh, get get a two-hit KO, but that's not going to happen, so back into Bostoise, he tries to burn me again, so that was a good play on my part to uh, avoid his nastiness. And uh, we're just kind of chilling out here, I'm going to hit myself with an Aqua Ring because it's my Bostoise's signature move, what, what? And actually his burn is not going to do anything to me now with Leftovers and Aqua Ring which is really freaking useful uh, if somebody's trying to stall you out or something like that. So, my little tanky, tanky boss toys is out here. I kind of halfway wish I had made him a uh, rest sleep talk or something with Scald and, uh, I don't know, Roar or some shit. <laughs> but it is what it is. He's doing his job. He scared that fucking wheezing out. Now we're gonna fire off a Scald that was meant for the Weezing on the Salamance. It gets a crit! And a burn! <laughs> Fuck yeah. We wrecked that thing's day. And uh, I think he's gonna try and boost up here just a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and show off the haze that I have as well. <laughs> because, because lol. It's hilarious. Stats reset. And uh, he's still burned so his life is just ticking away. Take it away there! Yeah, Bo Boss Toys is doing work. He's not like the most offensive Pokemon you've ever seen, but he's out here fucking taking shit down. That's for damn sure. I'm proud of him. I really love when the team uh, kind of meshes. Well, it's too early to see if it really does, but... At least Boss Toys is working out. Yeah, he kills us with Dragon Claw, but he Salamence also dies from the Life Orb, so... That's a one for one. I have four Pokemon, he has four Pokemon. Um, although I think his Weezing is in relatively poor health. So I send in the Crobat, Mr. Batman, and he sends in the Nitto King, which apparently is scarfed because it hits me with an Ice Beam before I'm able to do anything. But Brave Bird sacks that shit into the ground. Again, a one for one trade off. Crobat for Nitto King. Our team is now three and three, holy shit. This is going to come down to the wire. I got to start looking at uh, <clears throat> team makeup. So basically, yeah, this is a good switch. I thought Earthquake was going to do more than that. 
I should have gone for Thunderbolt maybe, but I thought he was going to switch into the uh, Jolteon, predicting that. So he goes for Dragon Dance here. Ah, uh, fuck. So, alright, there goes Gogo. -Go. Slughorn, do the thing! And hopefully, I'm not sure if he's going to be faster than for Alligator with one Dragon Dance. He is! Oh, thank God! We get the Horn Leech. So we get some uh, health recovery back on that, which is pretty friggin' nice. And uh, both of my attacking dudes are looking kind of weak here. And he's got a special attacker, only special attackers left, and I still have my Blissey. So, yeah, he's kind of shut down. That for Alligator was sort of his last chance to uh, get a physical sweep going. But it's not going to happen with Blissey, I'll tell you right now. She is just a mean, mean bitch. So I'm going to go ahead and set up a Wish this turn as he switch into Weezing. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and pass the Wish to my Electrobuyer. Because he deserves it. He's been out here. He's been doing work. Also because I think this thing has uh, Flamethrower instead of Thunderbolt. So it would be bad to send my grass Pokemon in here. He gets the pain split, which is just fine. I'm pretty sure we got this in the bag. I'm I'm not hesitating to say that this team seems to have worked out pretty well. Especially with the the healing and the wish passing and the awesome support from the team. We did a lot of one for one trade-offs. I could probably make my team a little sturdier. Uh it is quite frail at the moment, especially Crobat and Electrovire. But, yeah, overall, I, I think it worked out relatively well. So, I kill him with a flamethrower. And, uh... Yeah. What's he gonna do? Send on to Jolteon? Give me a boost? I don't think I've seen this thing all game. I was right, he was so scared to send it out. Here's the Shadow Ball. But, uh, Go -Go should be able to Earthquake that shit. Oh, but he forfeited. Oh well. Alright, so you learned something from every battle. Even though I won that battle, you can't just write it off and say, Well, the team's good, because... There will definitely be something that you will run across that just shuts your team down. For no reason whatsoever. And that's just kind of how Pokemon is. That's where the luck factor comes into it. So... All in all, I think I could make my team a little bit more bulky. I might switch out the Choice Scarf on Gogo and make him a little more bulky, although it did help me a whole lot. I basically think we bagged that game only because he had a Choice Scarf. Um, other than that, I think there's a, a lot of good synergy. Um, perhaps Blissey could be made a little bit more offensive. Uh, perhaps getting rid of Toxic or Stealth Rocks, and uh, giving your Seismic Toss, because I don't think I set Stealth Rocks up at all that game, so, yeah, kind of a waste of a move slot, but other than that, um, you know, make a couple revisions to the team, and then you go back, and it's like, just the minors, the minor changes can have such an effect on how your team plays out, and just how well they synergize, so it's definitely worth experimenting with. So friends, I hope you have learned at least a little something from uh, my vast, vast explanation here. I hope that it wasn't too long for you, um, but this is something that I'm super passionate about. I love team building, I love finding new strategies that work. Um, there are some generally accepted defensive cores that would work a little better than Blissey or Blastoise. If you're looking to build a team of your own, I would suggest trying out, uh, well, Jellicent and Ferrothorn was good. Uh, it had complete coverage, except now that Steel has lost its resistance to, um, Ghost and Dark. So, Ferrothorn and Jellicent have a little more to fear these days, uh, but it still works out relatively well. The other super, super fucking good defensive core is Slowbro and Amoongus, and that's generally because they both have the Regenerator ability, which lets them recover 30% of their HP every time they switch out. So you can switch into Amoongus, switch into Slowbro, switch into Amoongus, and just by switching you can heal them back up, which is a really advanced tactic, indeed. Uh, although it is probably spammed a bit too often, but who knows? You could be the next one to find the next uh, Meta. You know what I mean? 
So, if you do, let me know before you tell anybody else. <laughs> I would thank you heartily. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. If you did enjoy, I hope you will like, comment, and or subscribe. This has been Team Building Part Number 2. I hope you'll join us for Part Number 3. And until then, friends, bye-bye! One, two, three, four, goodbye, goodbye, see you.